Hello everyone, welcome to Can Race. I'm your host Bryce Turner. Coming up, a one-on-one -on -one interview with defending champion Scott Steckley. Also, a go-kart race between Jeff, Caden, and Trayton Lapsovich. That and more coming up as we get set for the season opener for the NASCAR Pinty Series at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Let's start with the news update. With the 2016 season taking the green flag, it is the end of another off-season. An off-season full of NPS news. Here are some of the headlines. In December, Pinty signed on as the new title sponsor of NASCAR Canada, replacing Canadian Tire. The six-year agreement by the Chicken Product Company makes this the NASCAR Pinty Series. Can-Am is another sponsor coming to NASCAR Canada. The company will fund Alex LeBay's 32 team full-time this season, as well as the race at Trois-Rivières and the September race at CTMP. Among other new race team sponsors in 2016 is Spectra Premium. The company will sponsor J.F. Dumoulin's number 04 team in six events. In addition, Spectra Premium will work with Dumoulin Competition to develop a radiator for the car. For the 2016 schedule, the series will return to the Honda Indy Toronto for the first time since 2011. Another major change is the Senu Stash race moving from late July to September where it will act as the penultimate race in the season and note that Auto Clearing Motor Speedway in Saskatchewan has been renamed Wyant Group Raceway. One of the teams not so lucky for sponsorship is 22 Racing, with no sponsor following Canadian Tire's departure, defending Pinty Series champ Scott Steckley does not have any current plans to race this season. The team will still field three cars this weekend, with Kaz Grala in the number 22, Brett Taylor in the number 46, and Pierre-Luc Ouellette filling in for Alex Tagliani in the number 18. More from Scott Steckley in a one-on-one -on -one interview coming up next. Coming off of a 2015 season that saw three wins, seven top fives, and the series championship, and on the eve of a 2016 season with no plans to race himself, but rather plans for his 22 racing team, we stop by the shop in Milverton, Ontario for a sit-down interview with Scott Steckley. When did it hit you that you won the championship? Uh, pretty much when we went across the start finish line, you know, as soon as you got that white flag, you know that uh, the race is over and we were running second. So uh, pretty much the minute we crossed the, the uh, start finish line for the checkered flag, I knew that we definitely had won the championship and it just, uh, it was an amazing, amazing feeling. How special was it to join a select group of NASCAR drivers with your fourth series title? Uh, it, it's, it's very rewarding, you know, it just, um, it makes you feel that you've accomplished something that, um, that only 33 other drivers have, has ever done. So you just got to thank all the people that have helped make that happen because there's no way I did any of it on my own. I've had a great group of crew members for 24 years that have always been behind me. Um, I've had a great group of sponsors for 24 years. So there's so many more people. Uh, involved that make it all happen so you just got to thank all them people and be very grateful for their support. Switching gears to 2016 why did you decide to sit out the first race? Um, basically it's a financial decision. Um, in, about, in 2009 I turned this into more of a business as 22 racing than just me personally racing where we started renting out cars to other teams and providing crew members cars trucking the whole we provide uh, everything a driver needs they can show up and race so in 2009 we started that and and um, 
it's grown and and we've had some very good luck with it mark dilly has was our first driver that drove one of our cars and he won in one of our cars lp dumlin won two races in our cars um, now alex tagliani has so it's very important for this business to grow and to be able to uh, run on its own without me racing i feel and for me to go and race without the proper funding would just be taking away from from the other teams that that are paying for the proper funding. So um, it was basically a business decision that I, I needed to make to, to make 22 racing uh, strong. How difficult of a decision was it? Uh, it's definitely difficult, but there comes a point where, where I'm not gonna be able to drive. I'm not saying I was ready for this yet, and I'm not saying I'm not gonna drive if something wouldn't come along, but, but uh, if I want this to run as a business and, and to be successful, it, it was, I believe, the smartest thing to do right at this present time. So at what point do you start to think retirement, or are you still thinking drive for five? Uh, definitely not this year, but you never know what could happen uh, for 17. We're still looking for sponsorship and, and uh, partners, but um, just just the way the business operates, it's not fair for me to race without the same funding that the other teams all have so um, I, I'm not saying I'll retire from driving anytime soon I you know I might do four or five races this year who, who knows for sure but um, it, it's pretty hard to to make plans and know what to do when when uh, you don't have the proper sponsorship in place so who will be driving cars for 22 racing in the season opener because your 22 car is still running uh, driving our the season opener in the 22 car is going to be Kaz Grala. He's a young up-and-coming racer. He races in the K&N series. He races in the Camping World Truck series. Um, so our plan is to run the 22 car all season just with different drivers. So he's going to do the, both CTMPs. Um, Donald Teague from Quebec is going to do the first opener at Shoddy Air. And from there we'll see who ends up driving it at Sunset. We're definitely trying to win an owner's championship with the 22 car. Um, it's going to be hard to do against the 18 car of Alex Tagliani, um, but he's back for the full season in, in the 18 car. He, he's going to miss the odd race, but his car will be in all the races. And then we have Brett Taylor from Calgary driving the 20, sorry, the 46 car um, as our third team. So, so uh, we're going to have a variety of drivers throughout the season and, and uh, you never know, hopefully I'll be able to do possibly Sunset or Riverside or Saskatoon, but we'll see what happens. You've got to go into the Western Swing races with your success there. Yeah, we'll see what happens. It, it's basically, like I said earlier, earlier uh, financial decision just to, to make the business profitable and, and to build run on its own. And, you know, I've, I've raced for 24 years, so if this is a time when it has to end, you know, I'm satisfied with what I've accomplished. I feel... I have nothing to prove winning four championships and as a driver, you know, I know it's with great teams and, and crew guys and sponsors, but um, I'm pretty satisfied with what I've accomplished. Do you feel you have anything still to accomplish in racing in general? Uh, no, I don't think so. You know, sure, I know we could come back if we had the proper funding and win, win races or cha another championship, but um, I don't feel I have to prove anything as a driver or, or a team that that we can't do it so i'm pretty satisfied with what we have accomplished defending nascar pinty series champion and 22 racing owner scott steckley thanks for joining me thank you very much to watch the full interview check out the can race features playlist on my youtube channel also available at the link below this video Last May's race at Canadian Tire Motorsport Park saw some exciting action right down to the finish. Scott Steckley and Andrew Ranger running first and second wrecked heading onto the front stretch on the final lap. What followed was a confrontation between the two drivers in the paddock. All the while rookie Gary Clute running in third got around the wrecking drivers to take the win. It feels great. It feels great. Uh, it's nothing else to say. I uh, can't thank my support enough to CTL guys and then uh, the legendary crew. In the August race at the track, Jason Hathaway took the victory, his first on a road course. Uh, pretty special for me being an oval racer. It's uh, pretty cool. Um, 
you never know what can happen to these things. So we uh, put ourselves in a good position to win, and we uh, made it happen. So. Now this weekend, the series returns to CTMP for the Clarington 200. The race will take place Sunday at about 1 p.m. Eastern. Qualifying is set for tomorrow at 3.45. TSN 5 will air the race on Sunday, May 29th at noon Eastern Time. And of course, check back throughout the weekend for coverage on Can Race. Also, tune in to CJRU 1280 AM Toronto on Tuesday for Motorsports Monday on a special day and time. Motorsports Monday delves into a different topic, being a series or type of racing each week, and also provides results. This week's edition will focus on the NASCAR Pinty Series. The segment will air during morning mixtape airing from 8 to 10 a.m. Eastern on CJRU 1280 a.m. and online at CJRU.ca. Following two podium finishes in three starts last season, driver Jeff Lapsovich is now retired from NASCAR Pinty Series action. His son Caden will race in the series this season after recording a podium finish in one of his six starts in 2015. Both Caden and his brother Trayton also won championships at Sunset Speedway. And earlier this month, the trio went head-to-head -head in a go-kart race at Mosport Cartways. Here's today's second feature, the Can Race Cup. Just outside Canadian Tire Motorsport Park is Mosport Cartways, where we're here for a go-kart race between Jeff, Caden, and Trayton Lapsovich. Warm up now for the first lap of a 12 lap race, the first ever Can Race Cup. This race will feature Jeff, Caden, and Trayton Lapsovich. Green flag in the air. You can identify the driver as Jeff is wearing a black helmet, Caden is wearing a red helmet, and Trayton is wearing a blue helmet. This is, race is utilizing part of the Mosport Cartways track. Mosport Cartways is located right beside the big road course of Canadian Tire Motorsport Park. Caden will lead the first lap and will have the fastest time with 49.6 seconds. Caden will lead that lap, but quickest is Jeff with 48.3. A close battle now ensuing for the lead, and oh, they wreck. Caden and Trayton. Instant replay, let's take a look. Beginning the third lap, heading into the first turn. Making some contact going around the corner, not working so well. Close battle for the lead, while well, Jeff appears to be in the top spot on lap 6. Coming across the line, it is Jeff leading lap number 6 and with a fast time of 
three wide heading around the turns and go karts going off track a little bit there. Heading along the front stretch now and it is Jeff leading that lap. Meanwhile, Trayton is quickest at 49.9 on lap 7. Looks like Trayton's out front with lap 8 in progress, but Caden has made the move. That puts Caden back in the top spot and with fast time of 48.7. Caden will lead lap number 9, Trayton quickest at 48.1. And a battle now between Caden and Trayton for the top spot. In contact. Let's take a look at a replay from another angle. Here you can see the contact between the two drivers. Caden is starting to pull away a little bit and a close battle now for second. White flag in the air, final lap. Caden leading Trayton and Jeff. Heading through the final turns now on the final lap to take the checkered flag, Caden Lapsovich wins the Can Race Cup. Trayton will finish second, Jeff will finish third. I'm here now in victory lane of the first ever Can Race Cup won by Caden Lapsovich. How does it feel to beat your younger brother and your father? Um, it's it's really cool. I think it's a it's a lot of bragging rights. So. Um... You know, it's something I can hold against them until we do this again, maybe. And first time racing on most sport carways, what did you think of the track? Uh, it's really cool. It's um, it's sort of just like Canadian time most sport parks. It's got the elevation changes, the fast corners, and you know the braking corners and stuff. So it was really cool. Um, I remember coming here as a kid and uh, watching them run the go karts here, and always thinking it was cool and wanted to try it. So um, you know, this was a, a lot of fun. I'm glad I got to do this. Second place is Trayton Lapsovich. And how did you feel in the go-karts? I know we were trying to see whether we could fit you in the big ones, and we did. First time out in the go-kart and this track, and a second place finish. How was the race for you? It was awesome. You know, I struggled at first, but then I got the hang of it. it was, I, I was uh, struggling to turn the cart, but I, I got used to it near the end, and it was an awesome race. I loved it. And then moving over to the old-timer, Jeff Lapsovich. <laughs> Third place finish. Well, you have a streak of podium finishes at CTMP, and you continue that streak here, by default anyway, because there's only three drivers, but third place, racing <laughs> against your sons. You're shots on me today, aren't you, Bryce? How was it racing <laughs> against your sons? Uh, it's a lot of fun, you know. Um, we've uh, we've been a racing family for a long time, so to come out here and get to race with them, uh, you know, me and Kate have run up against each other at the big track a couple times, but uh, he was so far behind me, it wasn't really... <laughs> much of a race but uh you know to get out here and uh you know beat fenders with these guys um uh, something that was all new to all of us sort of uh it was, it was a lot of fun um you know we'd love to do it again sometime and maybe you'll win that one meanwhile we have <laughs> you're, you're sharp today well we know you could have champagne they can so at least you got that up your sleeve but we do have home. yeah true that's why we have some sparkling grape juice i'm gonna step out of the way so i don't get all messy here but I'll let you spray it around. No spray. No spray. Spray Congratulations. 
<laughs> to watch the full race as well as a sit down interview with the Lapsoviches, check out the Can Race Features playlist on my YouTube channel. Also available at the links below this video. And that will do it for the Can Race CTMP pre coverage. Check back tomorrow for an update from the track and Sunday for post race. Also follow on Twitter at BryceT24 and at NASCAR5. You can also use hashtag CanRace. And follow on Instagram at CanRace underscore TV. Thanks to Scott Steckley, Jeff, Caden and Trayton Lapsovich, camera person Scott Turner and thank you the viewers for tuning in. See you this weekend for coverage from CTMP.